Hello everyone, welcome to the return of Jerry Hates Action, this special Christmas episode just for you guys. My name is Jerry and joining me as always is the ever quotable Jay. Now I have a machine gun. Ho, ho, ho. <laughs> and the Silent Hill biker himself, Kenneth. Woohoo! Long time no talk. Long time no talk. We are... We are back and we are doing Jerry Hates Action because it's it's the Christmas season and uh, why not go with the m movie that represents Christmas for apparently every white guy on the internet, <laughs> Die Hard. So with that being said, first we're going to get into how we have all been. Jay, how you been? What are you doing? Oh, since the last time we recorded, there's so much. <laughs> I mean, just like this past week, you don't have to give us a three-month history. <laughs> I was about to say, uh, this past week has been good. I have a, a pretty promising job interview tomorrow. Um, other than that, just been kind of working. Uh, saw Spider-Man twice already. That was really good. Word. I'm going to try to go see it tomorrow. It's a good move. Word. Kenneth, what about you? <laughs> Uh, where the fuck do I start? Um, uh, yeah, I'm just gonna keep it. I'm just gonna keep it short and simple. Um, fuck, I moved. Uh, fucking got a new job. Shit. Uh, yeah. Um, you know, lost some teeth. Uh, took up smoking pot. Got to hang yeah. out with me. Yeah, I've got to hang out with Jerry quite a bit. Lucky. Yeah. So. Sweet. Uh, as for me, same old, same old, still getting shots in the eyes. Uh, diabetes is, is doing fine. Mental health is doing fine. Uh, no complaints. I did a, a fun little guest spot on the podcast Under the Stairs the other day on Children of the Corn Part 5. That was absolutely fucking hilarious. So I bet there's a lot of material to make fun of. Is that uh, the one where they get adopted? No, it's the one with uh, Dared Car Carradine pretending he's Lance Henderson sitting in a chair. I I don't know how to describe the fucking movie. Um, <laughs> it was stupid. Think of the most basic version of straight to DVD formula, and that's this movie. Oh, fun. Yeah. So I watched this weird movie on Netflix that uh, I don't know if either one of y'all have watched. I can't even pronounce the name of it. It's like Air or Mitty or something like that. It's a uh, obviously a movie from another country. I don't even know what country it's from, but it's about this uh, blacksmith and the devil. Uh, oh yeah, that was a good movie. Yeah, I watched that. I was actually like, it was like watching a play. Yeah, I enjoyed that one. I, I actually, can't remember it either. Yeah, the practical effects for the way the demons looked were great. I had to watch all of My Hero Academia for Kenneth's daughter so that we could talk about it. <laughs> so, Such a good show. It, you know what? It turned out I actually enjoyed the show. It started off a little fucking stereotypical hokey, uh, but it actually ended up getting way better than i thought it would ever be so i like the creativity that they have around the people's powers yeah that's actually pretty dope and and the powers are not limitless there are like they have to train the powers they have like problems that they use there's one dude who has like a laser that shoots out of his navel yeah. but if he uses it too much he gets tummy aches <laughs> and there's like a girl that can like use anti-gravity and like float shit but if she uses it too much she throws up rainbows <laughs> so there, there's some funny shit to it but it actually d ended up being pretty good uh i watched a couple of episodes of one punch man yeah this first season's really good one. i haven't watched the second season i was just like i was sitting there you know mark was watching it and trip was watching it and i'm sitting there and i'm looking at it and i'm like what the fuck is this <laughs> but it, it was actually fairly entertaining i was just like this is fucking weird but it's good yeah, it's pretty funny. It's meant to be a parody of things like Dragon Ball Z and all that. Yeah, it was funny. All right, well, with that being said, we're going to get into Die Hard from 1988. 
An NYPD officer tries to save his wife and several others taken hostage by German terrorists during a Christmas party at the Nakatomi Plaza in Los Angeles. Who said they were terrorists? Uh, the well, world. Aren't they? Mm-mm. You don't I mean, remember by definition, that? aren't they terrorists? You don't remember that line from Hans? Who said we were terrorists? Oh, yeah. Uh, directed <laughs> by John McTarrion. Uh, starring, of course, Bruce Willis and Alan Rickman. So, first of all, everyone's seen this movie. This is not a first-time watch for fucking anyone. But, I did go ahead and do first-time watches of the entire rest of the franchise. Oh, wow. Dedication. So... While there will be spoilers for the first movie, of course, expect spoilers for the rest of the franchise too, because we're we're gonna bring it up. While this is mostly we're gonna, we're gonna talk about Die Hard, uh, the first movie, you know, we're gonna get in some ground of the franchise also. Yeah, y'all can school me on everything past the third <laughs> one because I think I've only seen the 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 later ones like maybe once or twice. Oh, see, I like Live Free or Die Hard. I didn't like A Good Day to Die Hard, though. I I didn't really care for either one of them. The first one and the third one are my favorites. Those are my favorites as well. All right, so... I actually think the third one might be my all-time favorite out of the whole franchise. Let's tackle this first movie. So, we do Jerry Hates Action because I hate action. But what do we do when we watch an action movie and... I end up liking the movie. Let's talk about what Die Hard does as an action movie that is makes me like it compared to, you know, all the other action movies we've done that I've fucking hated. Um, Is it because it's basically a home invasion movie? No, absolutely not. Um, There's two things. Two very, very important things. Um, One is the dialogue. The dialogue in this movie is so much better written than almost any other action movie I've ever fucking seen that wasn't directed, you know, by fucking uh, the guy who directed Snatch. What's his name? Oh, Guy Guy Ritchie. Ritchie. Guy Ritchie. Like, this is Guy Ritchie before Guy Ritchie dialogue. Um, it, It never comes off as extremely corny. Um, the one-liners are actually kind of fun and, and work out, and uh, everything that's happened in this movie, the the pacing of it, the dialogue matches the action. I find a lot of time the dialogue in action movies kind of suck and lack, while you have all these explosions and shit, it's like, yeah, but every time fucking Keanu Reeves talks, he looks fucking dumb, you know? Um... Shout out to Why that. you gotta pick on my favorite movies? I was... What movie do you think I'm talking about? It, the Matrix, I would assume, is that that's the last Jerry Hates action we did. No, but that's a good one to talk about also. That movie sucks, too. No, the... Because you uh... also make fun of time <laughs> you get a chance. You make fun of Nightmare on Elm Street, and you make fun of The Matrix. You just hate my movies. Can't wait to see Keanu Reeves. No matter what you say, if he looks dumb, he looks dumb. But I'm going to see him look dumb and fucking awesomeness in a couple of days. I'm, yep, Wednesday, I got my ticket. I was talking uh, about I'm, Point Break, I'm gonna watch by it the home. way. <laughs> For the record, I was talking about Point Break. Okay. Okay. I have a t-shirt. I know you do. It's sad, Kenneth. It's sad that you came to a point in your life where you were like, I need a Point Break t-shirt because this movie has been an important part of my life. Look at where you are, how old you are. You have children, and you said, I need a Point Break t-shirt. Hell yeah, I did. So that way my par- my kids can fucking damn appreciate the movie as much as I did and as much as my if dad did. you make Jade watch this movie, I am calling cps <laughs> i will take jade away from you yeah, she hadn't watched it yet but soon thank god uh not soon i'm gonna call her and tell her to not watch it there's only been one movie that i have sat jade down to watch and that and that she didn't like and that was john carpenter's the fog yeah that's a lot of atmosphere but really slow 
You know, yeah. I don't know if I've ever actually watched the original. It's good. I like it. I own it. <laughs> yeah, I liked it. But yeah, that's the only one that I know of for sure that she has completely disliked. Most all the other ones that I've let her watch, she's loved. And that's the reason why she's got, you know, a Tucker and Dale versus Evil t-shirt, a Scream t-shirt, and, you know, she's getting a couple of other cool t-shirts for Christmas. So Very nice. So, when it comes to the dialogue, obviously you can quote this movie all day, every day, up and fucking down the street. So... We'll get back in, into that once I throw it to y'all. But I want to talk about the second thing that this action movie does better than pretty much every fucking action movie I've ever seen. The editing. This does not have fast-paced, 20 million quick cuts every time someone fucking breathes near a gun. It is. That's one of my things I hate the most about action. As much as I love action movies, I hate the over editing of action sequences. It's awful. I think, I think in certain ones it's done very well. Like for instance, um, the second Kingsman movie. I thought that that one was really cool. You know, like where they where like when the guy was flipping over the bar and stuff like that. You know, the the camera. Well, yeah, would twist but even with then the they flips. still have the the longer, wider shots where you can see the full thing play out. Right, but the one that I absolutely and I actually and I love these movies, but one that I hated the most that it happened in one was I the Jake. Yeah, that those are the ones that I hated it the most because it's yep. like, God damn it, man! I want to see the fucking fights. Yep. Yeah, I saw a fight. See, I was watching like a YouTube video where like a martial arts was explaining like fighting in movies, and he was looking at a Jason Bourne video, and he was like, "Why did you even show? I can't tell you, because they're." They're, they're cutting close combat, and you can't see anything. You can't choreograph right. this. You can't piece it together. You, it, it's not, It's a bunch of flashy images to make you think shit's happening. Yep. And I hate it. You know, I can't stand it. What's funny, I've been watching this series on YouTube called Stuntmen React um, by Corridor Crew, and if you want a new appreciation for action, watch that. watch a couple of those videos. Uh... A really good example is, regardless of what you think about the movie, at the end of Fast Five, when they're dragging that safe around with two Mustangs, that's real. They yeah. built a safe to have them drag around, and for some of the scenes where they needed extra control over the safe, they built an extra safe around a Mack truck half so that someone could literally drive the safe. That's a real practical effect stunt. I had, I, I didn't know the extent that they had went through before watching that YouTube video. And it just gave me a whole new appreciation. I mean, I like that movie anyway, because it's super cheesy and over the top, but there was knowing that like that's that. a real safe being rolled around is, is fucking awesome. There was something like that happened in Die Hard uh, when uh, John McClane is like in one of the elevator shafts or, or whatever, and he jumps to climb into one of the duck shafts, but he misses and he falls and he grabs the second one. Yep. The stunt guy actually jumped, missed the the grab, and fell and grabbed the second one, and they kept that shot. Yep. And that was pretty that that was pretty dope. I didn't uh, do do a huge deep dive into like Die Hard like making of or any of that because I figured I'd rather just watch the whole series and see how it progressed. But yeah, so those are two. I things. actually. I actually learned that, that thing about the elevator shaft. I actually learned that from uh, that show on Netflix called The Movies, Movies That Made that Us. Movies That Made Us. Oh, yeah? yeah. Yep. Yeah, because yeah. Die Hard's one of them. Oh. Maybe Basically, every episode that. is a mini documentary about well, no, a different I, movie. I, I assume so. I've seen The Toys That Made Us. Yeah, oh, okay. I mean, it's pretty much the same thing, but it's cool because, like, in, in certain ones where, you know, all the actors and director or whatever are still alive, you know, I'm sorry, excuse me. But uh, the uh, like the one they did on Nightmare on Elm Street, you know, obviously if they had Wes Craven in there, it was just excerpts from like his previous interviews and stuff like that. But the um, the newest one or ones that they did where the actors and directors were whatever were all alive, it was new information from a different perspective than yep. the previous documentaries that we've watched before. Because you know some of those movies that are on there, you know, have got complete two to three hour if you look at nightmare on elm street i mean shit uh that well, never sleep again was what like five hours long yeah for 
kill. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? So, and I mean, I've watched the whole thing more than once. But, uh, but yeah, the, so if you get a chance to watch those, you really should. Because there's, and there's some of, some of those movies are like obscure movies that you wouldn't think. Like watching a documentary on Home Alone. Yeah, or Forrest Gump, Forrest Gump episode was really yeah, interesting. I had Forrest no Gump idea the history good. behind that movie. Yeah, that one was really good too. Well, all right, and then I guess I uh, know why I may be checking out this week. Um, so with that being said, I'm going to toss it over to Kent so you can talk about your experiences with Die Hard, how you feel about the movie, and, and all of that nonsense. So, Kenneth, take it away. All right. Um, I can remember when I first watched it. I, obviously, I was a kid. You know, my mom had it, and because uh, my mom had a huge VHS collection. Jerry, you should remember. Yeah. And uh, so my mom had a huge VHS collection, and when I was a kid, I remember watching it, and I, I was just enthralled with it then because I loved action movies when I was a kid also. And... Uh, you know, watching it, it was one of those movies that always stood out to me from the rest, you know, because I was still a Rambo fan, you know, and then uh, Predator and stuff like that. You know, your your big ones from the 80s, you know what I'm saying, like Van Damme and, and Stallone and Schwarzenegger. And, um, you know, so I was always fans of all those. But for some reason, like I said, Die Hard stood out from the others it was always one of those movies that it, it, it kind of, I don't, I, it's hard to explain. It's kind of like, um, you know, aside from just the gratuitous violence and things like that, it also felt like it had a little bit more heart to it because it was one of those things where you see this guy who's in there and he's not this fucking, you know, muscle bound fucking badass, you know what I'm saying? That's, you know, been either been in Vietnam or, you know what I'm saying, or has been, uh, a, you know, killed a predator and then also been a barbarian or something like that. It was just this average, everyday looking dude. And he goes and he gets put in a fucked up, unfortunate situation and he does everything he can. Even down to the fact of when you see him going through all these things that he's going through when he's trying to, you know, take out these terrorists and save the people in Nakatomi Plaza, you see him get hurt. You see him get fucked up. You see fear on his face, which which is one of those things that, again, like I said, sets apart the other ones. You know what I'm saying? With the exception of maybe Stallone in a couple of parts, but even then, you know what I mean? The difference between, you know, a person like John McClane, who's pulling glass out of his foot and running around a damn uh, a construction site in a fucking high rise barefoot in just a wife beater and fucking pants versus a person like Rambo who's running around in damn, you know, uh, Afghanistan and, and taking fucking gunpowder and putting it in a bullet wound. You know what I'm saying? So that's the reason why it always stood out to me because like I said, Bruce Willis just looked like this average everyday Joe. I mean, he wasn't even like all swole up and everything. He just looked like, you know, he was, a, he was a normal middle-aged guy and he was pissed off because at that point, you know what I'm saying? Him and his wife were having troubles. And he just got put in an unfortunate situation. And I think that was another one of those things that kind of resonated with me is because it was like, you know, there were, you could see people that were, that you knew or, or, or whatever that could be put in this type of situation, whether they would survive or not, you know, that's completely up to, up to fate. But it was one of those things where you could just see it. it, it I could, I could have totally heard about that on the news back in the day. Yeah, I agree. Him being a more everyday average person um does make it a little bit more entertaining because you know he's not you know military trained you know he's he he's just a fucking new york cop like yep. and he's not even a detective he's just a new york fucking street cop who right. just like fucking wants to to get save his wife and just cannot look the other way he just cannot Look the other way. He hates Germans. His grandfather was in <laughs> the Holocaust. He's like, fuck this bullshit. You know, stuff I mean, like that. I mean, and the same thing comes down to, you know, like, like even if you were to throw, you know, because, like, lethal weapon and stuff like that, that kind of falls into the buddy cop action drama. Yeah. But even if you take characters like you know, Riggs and Murtaugh, you know what I'm saying? You take Murtaugh, who has been on the force and he's a detective and he's been there for like 50 years, but you take Riggs, Riggs was this badass fucking special forces military guy. Yep. I also want to point out, 
that Die Hard is a buddy cop movie. I don't care what it is. Al. I don't care what anyone says. And the reason why number two is so lame is because he does not have a proper buddy. He has. I think I agree because in the third one he definitely has. Yeah. He's got Samuel Jackson around him all the time in the third one. Yeah. And 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 what's important about it is like in this movie his buddy does not have direct contact with him. His buddy while supporting him is like. It's not too badass as handling business. You know, Hang on even... two seconds. I gotta let the, I gotta let the cat out of the bathroom before she goes ape shit. Oh, okay. You let the cat out of the bathroom. We're gonna let the Germans into the bathroom. <laughs> so that we can... Yeah. Fucking We're just we're just gonna wait on this fucking cat. Because cats run the world. This is this is your cat break. This is time for meditation and reflection. We should definitely leave this in. And honoring of the great cat. If yeah, you well, do the not... reason why she was the reason why she was in the bathroom is because I have to feed her and Fatty Cat separately because she eats hard cat food. Fatty Cat has to eat soft cat food. So I feed them separately so that way Fatty Cat can't eat yeah. the hard cat food because he will gorge himself on it if I let him. Yeah. And that was your cat minute. Thank you for joining us. Now back to <laughs> Die Hard with a podcast. Um, so, yeah, the buddy cop system in this movie, it works because, the you know, neither one of them are badasses. They're average people. Uh, obviously, McLean becomes a badass in this movie, but, like... I just think they're very intelligent. Yeah, it, it, how they speak to each other, how everyone speaks to each other in this movie is so fucking well written and uh besides mclean sometimes going a little overboard with what he's saying uh because it's a movie everyone's pretty fucking like well grounded and would talk about how you would think they would talk right i agree with you there and then it's crazy because you know you take bruce willis who you know he he didn't have any roles like this at all before this movie he was a comedian on tv Yep, and I I think a few people didn't want him. Right. Because they wanted that 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 the Schwarzenegger Stallone kind of deal. And th- they were just like, who the hell is, you know, you're going to take this dude the, off TV? The moonlighting guy? Yeah, you know. What's really funny is, uh, well, I guess not so funny. I don't know why I said that, but it's interesting. Um, and I learned this from watching the movies that made us, is we almost didn't get Bruce Willis at all. Uh, because since it's based on a book, there was another actor who had it in his contract. The last time uh, a book with the character was adapted, he gets first dibs at any other adaptations. But by the time they made this movie, he was like 70. So they're like, oh, fuck, I hope he doesn't want to do this movie. What? Yeah, Yeah, so there was... I was wanting to think it was like Warren Beatty. It's something like that. But yeah, so the, the movie is based on a book. It's changed a lot. Yeah, from the, book. the, the based book, on a book. The movie came out like barely ten years after the book came out. Yeah, but in his contract, you know, there was a it, TV it, movie it, beforehand where an actor played the same character, and he had first dibs on any other movie based off the book. Yeah, it was something like that. But that's true. Um, I can't remember exactly how it went down, but that's true because they the, originally there was somebody that was supposed to do it, and again it was supposed to be this actor who who was like seventy years old at the time. I can't, for some reason I keep wanting to think it was Warren Beatty, but it may not have been. But uh, but yeah, and they they just didn't want to put like you know this this geriatric guy trying to save a fucking building from terrorists. I mean, I think that would be like a really cool uh, like stage play. At a senior citizen home is them redoing Die Hard. I'd get high and watch that. Frank Sinatra. <laughs> what? Frank Sinatra was in a movie called The Detective in 1968. Based on these guys' books. Oh, okay, but not not this not the specific book this one's based off of. Right. Just the same character. The guy wrote the same character multiple in multiple stories. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it was Frank Sinatra. <laughs> All right, I might have to. I'm gonna. I'm gonna have to deep dive into some of this shit now because I, I need to know about it. Just um, watch that episode. That's where I got all this information. Yeah, that's fair. Uh, Jay, 
let's talk about your experience with Die Hard. Um, so I, I also watched it as a kid, but I really didn't start a, uh, I didn't really start appreciating film until I was in my teens. And so, uh, I didn't really gain an appreciation for how different of an action movie this movie was until after the third one had come out and I had watched the third one a bunch. Um, and then I went back and watched the other two. And so that's, that's kind of where, where I came, but I remember watching it like with my dad on VHS um, I just didn't have an appreciation. There's no way I could have an appreciation for how good it was uh, back then. Um, but now I watch it pretty much uh, on a yearly basis. It's uh, easily one of my favorite action movies. If I had to make a list of like top ten action movies, mm, I just found out the I found out tonight the Bell Court Theater here in Nashville is apparently showing die hard at its theater in um on thursday <laughs> that would be cool so i was like hmm, tempting um one thing i do want to say and this thing is about this movie and every other fucking movie in the die hard franchise um no one aims when they shoot fully automatic weapons they just point and shoot they don't. They do, aim but at also what happens all. reflects that. Like what? So he's right. They don't really aim. They just kind of pray and spray. But what happens when they do that reflects that. It's not like they move the gun back and forth wildly and then hit like twelve people. They do that and like shit around the bad guys and around John McClane just starts getting destroyed because they're not aiming. So like it's it's story yeah, yeah it's not like it's not like john rambo where you know he's got this fucking... rambo three where he's just there's a hallway <laughs> guys and they yeah you know what i'm saying he's got an ak-47 on his fucking <laughs> sides and he's just like you know shooting from the fucking hip and killing everybody and then you got like eight motherfuckers shooting at him and not one of them hit that some bitch the yeah, only damn thing there... that he gets is some shrapnel inside yeah i'm sitting there watching <laughs> die hard movies this week and i'm like did John McClane just put in the Konami code for his fucking life? Like, <laughs> the only time this motherfucker gets shot is when he shoots himself. Right? Like, it's ridiculous. No, he gets pegged in the shoulder. I know he shoots himself in the shoulder in one of the movies. Yeah, uh, I don't remember that, part, but I know in, in the part first one four, he gets pegged in the shoulder while he's running away. In part four... When the Gabriel Hacker dude has him, uh, and he's got the fucking gun to him, fucking John's just like, oh yeah, well, fuck you. And he takes the gun and he shoots himself in the shoulder, yeah. which goes through him and then goes into Gabriel. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, in the first one, while he's running away, he gets he gets pegged in the shoulder by, by somebody's gun. Oh yeah, yeah. It's, um... If I'm not mistaken, it's Hans shoots him in the fucking shoulder. And I bet Hans shot him with a handgun. Because that's the only thing. Because no fucking assault rifles. The dude's got cheats on. I'm just calling hacks, okay? <laughs> well, have you ever played the Die Hard game? It's ridiculously hard. It's ridiculously fucking stupid. It sucked. Yeah, it did. Real bad. <laughs> that game was fucking terrible. Which, arcade, which Die Hard game are you talking about? There's multiple the Die Hard games. The one for the NES. Okay. the one I was referencing. I played. I played it on PC. Cause there, there was a PlayStation game, an arcade game. The, the NES oh yeah, the one. Die Hard arcade is fucking phenomenal. Yeah. So I again Nothing at first I thought movies, you were talking about that, and I was like, phenomenal. motherfucker. Yeah, the one that I played on PC was fucking terrible. Yeah. Okay. It was so awful. But it's crazy, you know, like like when you you know you seeing people with automatic weapons and stuff like that. It's only in movies because you know. Uh, this guy that I work with showed me this video, uh, co like a couple of weeks ago and, um, it was, uh, some kind of gang stuff in South America and, uh, yeah, every one of them dudes got shot in the drive-by. Yeah. I don't, I, I don't know. I was just watching it. I'm like, either no one knows how to aim and I get it when I'm playing fucking doom and I've got the chain gun. I don't fucking aim. I point in the general direction and hope shit happens. Like, so I get it. Like, I, I understand. Yeah, but, in this like, video that I was watching, and see, these cats, 
You know what I'm saying? They're like, uh, uh, they got the, you know, they got the guns hanging out of the car, you know, fully extended out sideways. You know what I'm saying? Like you see on TV and they got the shit sideways and whatever. And then, yeah, like I said, all them dudes that were standing beside that restaurant that they, you know, did the drive by on every single one of them got shot. <laughs> yeah. I just don't understand how fucking John McClane never gets shot. It's fucking right. ridiculous. Like he will get scratched <laughs> and beat up and cut and everything but your he even looked like he had a black tank top on at the end of the movie yeah but bullets aren't fucking touching this dude um so yeah the first die hard movie is is absolutely fantastic i really don't have any complaints about it um i thoroughly fucking enjoyed it i like this i liked every character in the movie there was no character where I was like, well, they are pointless or they're dumb, dumb or they're annoying. Everybody was fucking fantastic. All the action I can't scenes, say that. You can't? No. Who do you not like? Who did you like? I, I actually really, really enjoyed it when Ellis got shot in the face. With who, when who got shot in the face? Ellis, the dude that went in there and said that he was one of John's friends. Oh, that... yeah, all fucking coked out, like, baby, yeah. baby, listen to me, okay? You come in here, you know what you want, I know what I want. <laughs> I know how to call Andrew Dice Clay right fucking now, you know what I'm saying. Yeah, that guy? Yeah, uh, yeah I was I was happy when he got shot. In the but here's the thing, here's the thing. He is a character that you're like, as soon as they get shot, you're like, fuck yes. But you don't necessarily hate them. They're there purposely for you to be like, fuck yeah, shoot that yuppie motherfucker. No, I hate him. Oh. If, I, if, it were, if we were in real life and I saw that guy and he, and he looked at me and said anything along the lines of, you know, you use a gun, I use a fountain pen. I'd have hit him in the mouth. I, yeah, the fucking that fucking <laughs> the pen is really, mightier than the sword shit. Yeah, I really like anything along those lines. You know, the moment he started talking, like... Even I can remember it even when I was a kid. The moment that he looked at John and he was just like, or he looked at uh, Holly and was like, "Show and watch," and then and then John's looking at it like, "I really don't give a shit about this fucking watch." And the guy's like, "It's a Rolex." It's a Rolex. Was, yeah. This is the same dude that would be looking at business cards like, "Look at that off-white subtle subtext." Actually, <laughs> no. I don't. I don't even think that this. In my personal opinion, I don't think that this guy would have enough fucking integrity in himself to look at his business cards that way you know what i mean i think i think he would be one of those that would just be like okay what did the last guy how much money did he spend on these business cards okay i'm gonna spend the same amount of money or i want the more expensive ones not because of you know any of the details like an american psycho or any of the rest of that shit you know more of uh i just want to be better than the other guy and i don't care how i get there and he's not going to take the time to appreciate like you know uh, Patrick Bateman took the time to appreciate that. Not only did he appreciate it because he wanted to be better than the other person, but he also appreciated the quality of it, where it came from, everything else like that. Ellis wouldn't appreciate the quality of it or anything like that, as long as it had a name on it and it was more expensive than somebody else, because he'd be, you know, that's the only thing he'd give a shit about. Yeah, well, Ellis be, also be, doesn't that, kill the hookers after he fucks them. Uh, you don't know that. Okay, fair, fair. Yeah, that's a whole different movie. Point taken. Yeah, you have no idea. So, uh, that's all I'm saying. I hated that fucker. <clears throat> I mean, fair. I can't. I can't argue with those facts. Um, but I still maintain maintain that I had a fun time with that character because I just liked watching him spew that shit. And Gruber is just sitting there the whole time, like. I don't believe a damn thing you're saying, but I'm going to keep letting you go because this is going to work out for me. Like, just the the way Gruber is in this whole movie. Cool, calm, and collective running shit. Mm -hmm. You know, if, if all I'm saying is that if Nazi Germany was ran by a bunch of Honda Grubers, I get how the Holocaust went that far. <laughs> I get the well-oiled machine it became. Oh, my Lord. And his death scene was epic. Oh, yeah. Super fucking good. Um, and you know how that came about, right? Uh, they filmed it, Kenneth. 
They okay. wrote the scene and they All right. shot it <laughs> and they All edited right. it. But and, you know the story behind how they got the fear on Alan Rickman's face? No. Okay, what happened is they actually had him hanging off and he they were they were going to have him fall and he was only falling like 40 or 50 feet. You know what I'm saying? At, onto a one of those big balloon things at the bottom, you know, that stunt dudes do when they what hit it. What do you it. mean only 40 or 50 feet? It may not it. even been that. It may not even have been that far. Anything over 10 feet, you drop the only. <laughs> but either way, <laughs> the, the, the thing was down there to catch him. You know, where they had the, the big balloon, the big air pillow or whatever it was. Sure. And it was down there to catch him. And they had him hanging off at the edge. All right. And they were going to count it down to when they were going to drop him. And the director said, drop him at one. Kind and of a so, dick move. Right. And so Alan Rick Rickman wasn't expecting to be dropped right then. And you know, so when they were filming that shot, the fear on his face is genuine. All I'm saying is that if Nazi Germany was ran by the director <laughs> of this movie... I would get how the Holocaust got so far. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah, that's 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 probably one of the greatest tidbits of that movie is I, the fact that that fear on Alan Rickman's face was completely genuine. He was terrified when they let him go. <laughs> I did like the uh, thing where they found out Alan Rickman had, like, a super good American accent, so they wrote, like, on the fly the scene of him and John McClane meeting each other. Right. That was really fucking good. Um. Okay, so we love Die Hard. Die Hard Two takes mm -hmm. place on Christmas again. This time it's in what a Washington D.C. airport, and uh, it's in an airport. That's all I remember. Yeah, it's in an airport, and fucking there's a Mexican drug dealer army guy and uh john mcclain gets caught up in it anyway um dialogue in this movie kind of sucks uh the twist was good as for having the 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 general that came there to help uh the good guys turn out to be the bad guy that was fine but th the movie just missed a lot of the I don't know. It just wasn't well written. It just didn't really feel. Yeah, I mean, it was quality. pretty much. It, it was a money grab, man. I mean, you know, nobody was expecting the first one to do as well as it did, and so it was just a money grab. They were just like, okay, let's do something else. Let's put John McClane somewhere else. Okay, let's put him in an airport. You know, let's have him in the snow. Yeah. And that's and and that's pretty much how that happened. Yeah. Now, part three, on the other hand. Fucking amazing. We get some good shit in part three. So part, I love part three, three so much. Part three, uh, a another German terrorist uh, decides to make John McClane get naked and wear a sign that says <laughs> "I hate the N words" in downtown Harlem, where Samuel L. Jackson sees him and walks up to him and is like, "Bro, what the." fuck are you doing these guys are going to see you and they're going to kill you and the bad thing about this is is that if that had been in reality yeah that whole none, none of that movie would have happened oh that motherfucker would have been dead within minutes yeah so that's accurate uh so then we have the german guy playing oh, with, and what sorry i was gonna say and we get a throwback to the first one because he tapes the gun to his back like he did in the first one correct yeah. he does um, and so the German guy's playing all these fucking games about bombs with, uh, John McClane and Zeus, you know, forcing this buddy cop thing that really, really works out because Zeus is fucking hilarious. John McClane's actually really, really funny in this movie. Uh, the story is pretty well written. Uh, the dialogue's still good. I don't think it's as clean as the first movie but it's a way 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 better improvement over the second movie 
And see, I think I, I think the third one did so well because, you know, obviously if you put Samuel Jackson in it for the most part, you know, he's going to steal the show anyway. But I really think that it did so well because they were actually trying to get away from the formula of the first two Die Hard movies, you know, where you take this guy and he's in an unfortunate situation and he's stuck in an airport or he's stuck in a building or something like what the, What's the next thing going to be? Is he fucking stuck on a ship? Yeah. You know well, what I'm saying? Kenneth, let me Towards tell you the end of this movie. That, yeah, but see, it wasn't a whole <clears throat> No, no, you're right. It's still John McClane getting stuck in an unfortunate situation, but this time it's not just complete fucking randomness. It's, it's his actual job. It's it's his yeah. job. It's someone getting revenge on him and also just using him as a pawn to distract from the actual goal. Exactly. Also, the only Die Hard movie where he actually works in New York. The rest of them take place in other states. Very true. And so, or I, countries. Right. If we're going to talk about the fifth one. But... I mean, and I think that was the reason why I think this one did so well is because it it it, it was it was very well written to be a Die Hard movie that was taken away from the formula of the first two, you know, because even the whole thing with the puzzles that they had to do, like when they're sitting there having to do the thing from the wa- with the water or trying to find the school with the with the liquid bomb in it and all the rest of that stuff, you know, the whole thing. And then, you know, and then in this one, you've got other people like supporting characters, you know what I'm saying? Like the bomb guy who gets hit in the face with all the stuff and it's corn syrup, you know what I mean? And and so on. You've got other supporting characters that are also doing very well in this in in this whole thing, because in the first one, you really didn't have other than other than uh, Gruber and his group. You know, you really didn't have any major supporting characters. And then when the second one came in, you had a couple of supporting characters here and there. You know what I mean? But it was only like, you know, the guy that was trying to help him get around the airport and set up the tower or something like that. And this one, you've got a slew of supporting characters. You know, you've got you've got the uh, the main guy. Who's that guy? What's that guy's name? Jeremy Irons? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. All right, so you got him and you got his whole crew. Then you've got Sam L. Jackson and then you've got the the other cops and you've got all this different stuff. So you've got a whole bunch of a whole bunch of stuff going on. And I think I think that's what made it that much better. And then on top of that, you know, the 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 dynamic between Bruce Willis and Sam L. Jackson was fucking great. Yeah. Oh, but the worst CGI water I have ever seen in my life. When they flood the dam and Bruce Willis is trying <laughs> to outrun it, that looks so fucking bad. Doesn't it, though? This is two years after Jurassic Park. And this is what you're giving me? Wow. I'm sorry. I'm wow. sorry, dude. I, I mean, I have I have already went down the rabbit hole of trying to compare things to the awesomeness of Jurassic Park, and I just gave up because there's so many movies that came out after that that just fucking... The, the digital effects are terrible. <laughs> Yeah, like the it, it just looks so fucking bad. Um But yeah, so this one turns out really fucking good. Um number 4. I get why people don't like this one, but I'm going to explain why I like it. You like number 4? I like number 4. That one's the most like a standard action movie. But I like hacking I Do you li- like hackers? I I like hackers. I like phone freaks. I like fucking... No, I meant the movie. Yeah, I like hackers in the movie. Okay. Yeah, hack the planet, bro. Come on. <laughs> this, is so, planet. this is so... In- I did not expect this conversation to go this way. This is interesting. I'd like to hear why you like number four. I like hacking. Straight oh, okay. up, you it's because that. I fucking like hacking. I... And especially, like, before I started watching Die Hard, I had actually been watching uh, these videos on, like, um, major computer viruses and, like, major legit hackings, um, stuff on the black market with, like, Silk Road, Dream Market, Exit Scams, um, shit like that. Um, So I had already spent, like, the past two weeks, like, deep, deep in this rabbit hole. 
So when I get to this movie and it's about hacking, I'm actually like, oh shit, okay, I'm in, I'm into this. <clears throat> but I'm also into it because I thought they did a really, really good character play by bringing in McLean's daughter. You know, we can't use his wife anymore, so now we're going to use his, his his daughter as his his family trauma, which they fucked up on in the next movie, but we'll get there. Um, and they use that to, to help develop John a little bit more. The Justin Long character is actually, I really fucking liked, I really enjoyed him. I liked having him next to McLean, showing that, like, how much fucking different they are. I like the conversation about what makes that guy be the hero, you know? I, I And I like the development of all of that. So I, I get why people probably didn't like the movie because it probably feels the least diehard ever because it does involve a whole lot of fucking computer shit. I love the fourth one. But I really fucking liked it. And I think... Go back and watch the movie, not necessarily as a full Die Hard movie, but just as a good, like, fucking... Uh... Hacking movie. And it's pretty fucking great. I really enjoyed it. Uh, Kevin Smith is awesome in the movie. Um, I know Kevin Smith has talked about how he wrote on this movie. And, uh... The, the fun that was... But I like this movie. I get why people wouldn't like it, but I enjoyed it. The fifth movie. Oh. The the worst movie oh, in the no. franchise. The abortion. Yeah. The Jason Goes to Hell. Um, it's bad. This movie is just fucking bad. I it's just not entertaining. I, I, I can't even go into... Like, you really just pack up and go to Russia thinking you're going to save your son. What the fuck are you going to do? He's arrested by the Russian government. There is not a goddamn thing you can do except maybe go visit him in jail. I will find you. No. I will kill you. That's a different situation. <laughs> I know, but still, that's what it made me think about. I hated that fucking movie. Yeah. And I hate, I hated the fourth one, too. So well, that's the reason why I'm not saying a whole go lot. Go fuck yourself. Okay? Yeah, you're wrong about you, the fourth one. That's you fine. own a fucking Point Break shirt. I don't want to hear your opinion <laughs> on Die Hard 4, whatever the fuck it was called. Because also, the names are stupid. I'm sorry. Die Hard 1. Die Hard 2, Die Hard 3, Die Hard 4, Die Hard 5. I'm not calling you Die Hard with a Vengeance. I'm not calling you Another Day to Die Hard or whatever hard. stupid James Bond movie <laughs> title you came up with. You can fucking Die Hard with an erection for all I care. We're not calling it that. Die Hard One I actually, through Die Hard I actually five. watched this video of a guy who who's a mortician, and he said that that's actually a myth. He said that uh, the only time that anybody he ever saw an erection on a corpse was when uh, was when uh, they were filling him up for the formaldehyde, <laughs> and some of it went in there. Are you telling me that one scene in Clerks is wrong, Kenneth? Yep. Go fuck yourself. You own a point blank shirt. Um, <laughs> so. Yeah, Die Hard 5 is just Oh yeah, I need to say this <coughs> atrocious. before I forget. We were talking about that show, the movies that made us, and you said something about Jason Goes to Hell a minute ago when they did the Friday the 13th episode, or Friday the 13th episode. They didn't talk anything about that movie. They shouldn't. They did 1 through 8, and then fucking 10 on. Good. You know, I, I, I really think we, like one day we do Jason Goes to Hell. Just to, like, have us, like, fucking murder this movie. But I'm just saying, I just thought it was funny because, you know, they didn't even acknowledge that it, they barely acknowledged that it existed. I think the only thing that they used to acknowledge that it existed was the 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 thing where um, 
uh, the Freddy glove comes up and pulls his mask down just so they could talk about Freddy versus Jason. Yeah. Do you know, you, you know, know how like in horror movies, like there's the trope, oh, when are we going to send the character to space? Mm-hmm. In action movies, it's like, when are we going to send the character to Russia? <laughs> Right? Oh, man. Some of them, I wonder if John like, Wick 4 is moving to Russia. I'm just saying, like, yes, yes, Rocky 4 is the exception. We know. We get it. Okay? Perfect movie. I'm with you. Calm down. Don't, Kenneth, keep your gun cabinet locked. Okay? <laughs> um. But, yeah, if they send you to Russia, you know your franchise is going bad. Um. I don't know. I think there's a, a few where they end up in Russia that turn out to be pretty good. Like what? Uh, yeah, on the spot, Kenneth. Name it. <laughs> yeah, I can't. Yeah, okay. Because uh, besides Rocky Four, What are I... some other movies that where the franchise goes to Russia? That's the problem that I'm having. I'm trying to remember them, but I know there are ones where they do. So we got Rocky and Die Hard. What else, what else has done a, a late sequel where they end up in Russia? Oh, I don't know. This is y'all's territory. This is... I'm just here you to talk You made the statement. The... Yeah, because it was a funny joke, Jay. Not <laughs> not for, for y'all to fucking Wikipedia me. Listen. I'm listening. What other yeah, action too, movies I'm... go to Russia? I, I'm really I trying know. to think of it. Like, I James was convinced Bond. maybe... He hasn't gone to Russia yet. I don't think... Maybe oh, yeah, I... Think... Never mind. Maybe I James hit... Bond. And act, well, James Bond, yeah, but they, he's been in Russia multiple times. Yeah, Russia's the bad guy, guys. Um, Russia's always the bad guy. At no point is Russia ever the good guy. F- fuck commies, get money. You know what I'm saying? Uh, um, you could say Rambo, but technically he didn't go to Russia. He just fought Russians. Yeah, he was fights it, Russia. Was it a good but movie, He fights though? Russia in the second movie and in the third one. I actually really enjoyed the third one. Okay. Well, I mean, did... there were things about it that were there were things about it that definitely weren't the first one and the second one. Is that the one, Afghanistan but... one? I was gonna yeah. say I like it that it's old enough that he's helping the Taliban because they were still the good guys at that point. Yeah, I've always <laughs> thought that was amusing. But uh, but yeah. Hey, here's so... my question. Um, what does Russia think when we make movies like this about them? Like did like did Die Hard Five even come out in Russia? I have no idea. Like, did they literally, like, you gotta, I, like, I know China, like, is up in arms about any kind of depiction that makes them look shitty, but, like, how does Russia feel? Like, are they like, okay, if it's set in the 80s or before, we'll let it go. But if it's set in the modern day age, like, how does Russia feel about this? Like, I, like I'm, I'm just curious, because Russia has a pretty fucking big ego. You know, Poon Poon is about some shit. Poon is literally poisoned fucking spies in England. He don't give a fuck. I don't know. Could Poon kill McLean? You... Let's ask Russia. Well, the crazy thing about that is, and that type, I mean, I mean, phone. I guess it would just have to be a hit or a miss. And honestly, because when it really comes down to it, you know, things in Russia are so. I mean, hell, you know, you've seen the Tetris episode of the Gaming Historian. Yeah. I mean, every, I mean, everything, everything is under lock and key by the government in Russia. So, I mean, I guess, like I said, I guess it would be a, a hit or a miss. I mean, would it be one of those things that movies that they want, American movies that they want to release in Russia, if any at all, which I imagine, I imagine that some of them are over there. But, you know, especially with the Internet. But at the same time, you know, if I'm not mistaken, I think the Russian government monitors what goes through the Internet. Oh, no, they do. VPNs are a very fucking big thing uh, in the underground Russia shit. That's what I'm saying. I mean, so, you know, but uh, but everything is monitored that goes through there. So I would imagine there would probably be like a screening of certain movies for Russians. And they'd be like, you know, uh, this is offensive to Mother Russia. And then cast it off, you know? Yeah, they probably do. I just haven't, like, looked into that to see 
you know, because obviously China does it, other countries do did it. Right. England did it for a long fucking time. Don't act like let's not act like they didn't say, oh, this film's by Lucio Fulci. Denied. We can't yeah, have another it, uh, Sex Pistols, Kenneth. Yeah, you but can't the thing about it is the difference. The difference between England or the UK in general fucking banning movies mostly had to do with violence more than anything else. I mean, you know, that I, I don't I, I don't really think the UK really banned a whole lot of movies that fucking said the Queen was, you know, a cunt or something like that. Great. Now our podcast is going to get banned in the UK. <laughs> we, I was just using it as a general example. We could use that as an advertisement thing. Banned yeah. in the UK. Banned in the UK. But the Russia, point is China. But the, <laughs> Kenneth's mom's but, house. <laughs> but the oh, point Kenneth's is, mom doesn't like us. Oh, she totally is. She's listened to a few episodes. You know, sometimes she just kind of shakes her head at the crazy shit that we talk about. But for the most part, she's listened to our episode. She has she given me the look where I know she has heard something I've said, and it was like, <laughs> Jerry, sweetie, I know you can't know. Right. <laughs> But, you know, I know she, I, I would imagine that in the UK it wouldn't be near as bad as, like, you know, like I said, if, if it was anything, like, offensive to the country itself, like Russia and China is, because, did, you know, b both of those countries are so communist. Did Die Hard 5 get to film in, in Russia? I can find out real quick. Find, find out. I want to know if they actually got to film in Russia. Because if they got to film in Russia... Then Russia was just like, we don't give a fuck. Like, like I don't know. I Just the thought occurred to me while I was watching it. You know? I mean, it's crazy, like, when you see uh, stuff filmed in, like, Moscow and shit like that, you know? Well, I mean, they're a fully open country. They're just, you know... The, it's open with quotation marks. I'm doing the, the, the finger <laughs> yeah. thing, you know? Yeah. Um, they're not quite as bad as China, but uh, they also publicly get caught doing more shit than China. That's because they don't give a fuck. Um, nope, it was filmed in Hungary mm -hmm. with uh, Budapest standing in for Moscow. Oh, okay. So they couldn't film in Russia. Interesting. All right, well... If anyone has any opinions on that, please let us know, and we'll be sure to forward our findings to Alex Jones for his next new show about <laughs> how Russia is turning diehard gay. Um, that guy entertains me so much. <laughs> yeah, he's fucking just... Oh, he's hilarious. I can't even go down this rabbit hole. I can't right <laughs> like I said, he uh, just entertains me because I'm like, oh my god, you know, what? you like, are so crazy. <laughs> we like we should do like like a random bonus episode where it's like the first half of the episode is just us recommending like our favorite YouTube channels, and then the second half is us just talking about like really like weird conspiracy theories. Yeah, that would be fun. Most of my YouTube channels would probably be boring for most people. Most of mine are going to be like. This is Summoning Salt, and they talk about world record progression for speed running. This episode on Wii Sports speed running was really interesting because, and everyone's gonna be like, "Guys, are we sure Jerry's medication is working?" <laughs> I don't yeah, know about gonna, this. Mine's gonna be like gaming historian, fucking Cinemassacre, Merlin Archery, and Minty's comedic arts. <laughs> Those aren't bad though. Like, it's not like you're like. Me, where I'm watching, like, all this shit. I, okay, I, side thing. I watch a lot of stuff that's about, like, weird shit on the internet, crazy people, all this stuff. There was a guy on Reddit, and um, he, he was posting because he needed to crucify himself for God, but... His version of crucifying himself was to put full four bullets into his dick. Ow. What? And I don't mean shove four bullets inside of his dick. I mean load the bullets in a gun and shoot himself in the dick four times. And he did this. He also claimed to remove a testicle 
and his friend cooked it and ate it. Now, oh, at this point, you, you're going, oh, this is just some troll on the internet. Pictures were provided of what his dick looks like now. He has an empty scrotum and a stump. There is no head. There is the stump where the shaft was. Not even... Gross. Half an inch, okay? What country was this from? I believe this was United States. Now, Probably from not, Russia. When he, <laughs> when he did this, he said he, he bled for 14 hours before taking himself to the ER. He has also mutilated himself in other ways. Um, the last post we ever had from this guy was him saying he needed to finish the crucifixion. God was telling him he needs to remove what little was left of the stump that was formerly known as his dick. Is he from Florida? Don't know. We do <laughs> not know him, his name. We know nothing about the guy, but we can look at pictures of his mutilated junk. Sounds like somebody from Florida. I don't want to. I looked at them because I needed proof that the, obviously the guy that was doing the YouTube video couldn't fucking show the pictures. So I looked them up and I saw them to make sure this was legit, and it was. Um, Jesus. So, if anyone's wondering how I spend my days on YouTube, it's looking up stuff like that. Um, it's it's hearing the worst stories of humanity, like like Daisy's destruction or something along those lines. Shit in the real world that makes Serbian film look like an arcade game. Hey, speaking hey, of which. <laughs> speaking of which, Jay posted on that. If you're not following the Kill the Cast uh, page, not the group, but the page, we post memes constantly, and, and Jay posted a... Someone made an arcade of a, a arcade cabinet out of a Serbian film. I think it's just photoshopped, but... It might be, but it was it was, it was was pretty dope. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, Jesus. Jesus. Uh, anyway um <laughs> yeah so well that's a good note to end the show on so anyway jerry actually likes die hard who knew i I'm like sorry. die hard i was thinking about i was thinking about that that you remember did both of y'all play that game fucking heavy rain no i i have though bit. looked outside and saw that rain was heavy if that counts okay in the game there's no? a spot where like you have to like cut off one of your appendage and it gives you the option to choose what you're going to use to cut off one of your appendages of. I think it's your thumb. And it just made me think about, you know, if in the game you were given a gun or a knife or a cheese girl, shoot yourself in the dick four times. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it was your dick and you had to do that. That's what, that's what that made me think of. Sorry. Yeah. Also, can can we talk about what the fuck does the name Die Hard mean? It's hard to die. I don't think grammar, like in a grammar sense, that's what Die Hard means. Well, that's what they mean. I don't know about grammar. I never thought about it when I was a kid, but as an adult, you know, it, it, it seems like you're going to die with an erection. Oh, my Lord. Ho, ho, ho. I have Viagra now. <laughs> now um, I have an erection. Ho, ho, ho. Um, so, yes. <laughs> I like Die Hard, Die Hard 3, and Die Hard 4. Uh, Die Hard 5 is uh, trash. Arbo. It is awful. It is the, the Kill the Cast brain scan episode of movies <laughs> um so there's that um we should redo that episode we should do do y'all want us to redo? Well, we were going game? to were we yeah remember we were all gonna order the scream factory version like now that it's out we can you're right we should redo brain scan in 20 2022 new year new us new brain scan and you know what else we should do? What? Evil Dead.
Oh God, the cursed episode. Do we ta- do we tackle? Do we do Evil Dead? Do we do all four movies? Uh, the trilogy and the remake. In Not the gonna new put year. the show in there. Uh, well, isn't, I mean, uh, isn't next year like seven years? I think so. We, Damn, we can, really? We can try again for an anniversary. Holy fuck, we're we're like three years away from being doing this shit for a decade. I know, isn't yeah. it crazy? What? We have wow. gained nothing. Kenneth's life has got worse. He has a Point Break shirt. Hey, fuck you! <laughs> My you life know, has gotten better. Of how fucking true that is. Fuck you. It, so. <laughs> I fucking love you guys. I'm so glad that we did this. I don't care if it were to end tomorrow. I would. I could be happy. Like I just. I'm so happy we did this. Yeah. Um. Me too. This is. It really gives me joy to do these things. Um, Tell me that my life is fucked. I appreciate it, dick. <laughs> Jerry always spitting truth. I didn't make that decision, Kenneth. Okay? <laughs> you made that decision. You chose to do that. That Utah, was you. Give me two. What? Utah, give me two. yippee ki motherfucker. I'm sorry, yippee ki Mother Russia. <laughs> oh Jesus! God, that movie's terrible. If anyone wants to edit the scene in that Halloween movie where Buster Rhymes says "trick or treat, motherfucker," to somehow make it say "yippee ki Mother Russia," I will. I I don't know. I'll give you ten dollars or something. But just like seeing him Jerry. kick Michael Myers in the chest as he's going "yippee ki yay, Mother Russia." I mean, I could do it, just not in his voice. That's fine. Take my voice. <laughs> that would be even more funny. Yippee ki yay, Mother Russia. Do it. That would be more funny. Fool, I give anyone permission. Fucking clip my voice. Do what you want with it, as long as I get what I want. <laughs> I think we should start off with a meme and then go with the audio. Where's Darren at? Darren from Psycho Semantic Podcast. Uh, I know you and I are about to do some stuff on Bohemian Grove, but before we do that, I need you to make this happen somehow. Um, and then we'll get into all the president's fucking male children at Bohemian Grove. What the fuck? What? Go, go. If you go, there's an episode of Psycho Semantic on, uh, which might be the only episode he's ever had to censor inside the episode. Uh, but we talk about the Franklin cover-up, and it's the most fucked up shit ever. You know, Serbian film ain't got shit on this. King Kong ain't got shit on me. So, alright. Uh, with that being said, thank you all for joining us for this, uh, Christmas episode of Jerry Hates Action, where we did the most... Christmas movie ever, which is Die Hard, followed only by Jaws the Revenge. Second most popular <laughs> Christmas movie, it turns out. Um, with that being said, thank you all. 2022 is coming. It is going to suck. Oh, your, yeah. your life a, is... It always comes in threes, and goddamn 2020 was terrible. 2020, well, 20... 2021 was fucking god-awful. Kenneth, <laughs> 2022 is just 2022. But the first half of 2020 was great because I got to come down and hang out with you guys. Right, technically yeah, wasn't but, the first half. But then Kenneth bought a Point well, Break shirt. A weekend and in 2020 was Coronavirus. <laughs> and that's the crazy thing. If you really think about that, we barely missed the fucking outbreak of coronavirus. I know. I think about I mean, it all the time. I mean, we barely missed it. Jay would have brought it to us. If we would have gotten it, Jay would have been the one that brought it to us. That's prob. Well, I mean, you all went to that convention. No, no, no. Yeah, but you came from the West Coast. It didn't start in Washington. It started. The first cases were in the West Coast. I could have swore it was the, our first cases were in New York. Kenneth, shut the fuck up. I'm trying to fuck <laughs> with Jay right trying now. Trying to make me feel bad. And you're not. I made. Mean, honestly, honestly, all bullshit aside, I think I honestly think Billy got it there. I'm just trying to make Jay so upset with his life that he buys a Point Break shirt. 
<laughs> he I don't like it. Point Break enough to buy a shirt for it. Yeah, he would. He I does. don't. I don't have he it. Just don't I want don't to tell hold you the it truth. in reverence like a lot of people do. He just don't want to tell you the truth, Jerry. Uh huh. The truth is that it's a good day to podcast hard. Yeah. Actually, that's a better movie. Fuck <laughs> Die Hard. Watch um, Pump Up the Volume with Christian Slater. Greatest, one of the greatest movies ever made. Oh, pump the jam. It's the pump reason it I podcast. Talk hard. Um, but yeah, okay, we're out. Thank you all for joining us. We'll be back in 2022 with all kinds of, of shit. I guess 2022, we will see the remake of Brain Scan. We will see the Curse of Evil Dead lifted. Um, we'll come back to Horror Coliseum. We'll do some other shit. Um, I've got an idea for a show that the guys know about that I want to do. It's just, it's gonna, I, I need to sit down and actually make it. I have to like research and write and script and like, I just haven't done that yet. So I've got to find the motivation. So somewhere in there we'll do that. But thank you all for joining us. I know we did not put out a lot of episodes in 2021. We'll make it up to you in 2022. We're coming back. There will be there will be Kill the Cast, Jerry Hates Action, Underwater Kaiju from Outer Space. Uh, we I may even jump back in Cult Unknown and Atomic Age Saucer Cast. Uh, you can't forget about these. Do you know Candace? <laughs> Jay, you can't forget about these, can you? <sighs> God, what man. what are D's, Kenneth? <laughs> I don't even want to do it now. Fuck you both. Oh, oh is it, I want you to do it. Buddy. Is it because because you don't have a CD? Because you don't have to see these nuts because it's a podcast, bitch. <laughs> we could turn on our webcams if we're showing each other our nuts. No, I plan on doing that because I haven't seen either one of your faces. Like obviously Jerry's more recently, but I plan on doing that just as soon as we're finished because I haven't seen Jay's face in fucking forever. Oh, I am wearing a zombie's flesh eater shirt, so I'm pretty stoked nice. for that. Uh, okay, we are out of here. Thank you all for joining us. We love you. See you in 2022. Merry Christmas. Happy holidays. Uh, happy Toyota Thon. Happy Merry uh, Honda holidays. Whatever you celebrate. <laughs> Jay, put your shirt down, even though I do dig the purple Spider Man shirt. Um,. Also, I love that that pocket pussy you have back there is in the shape of Mega Man's cannon. I didn't know they made oh, pocket awesome. pussies like that. That's great. Okay, we're done. We're out. Thank you, everyone. See you in 2022. Do not buy a Point Break shirt. Thank you. <laughs> You'll regret it for the rest of your life. <laughs> Always tip your mortician. If you enjoyed this show, then make sure you check out the other great shows on the Legion Podcast Network, like Cinema PsyOps, Cinema Beef, Devour the Podcasts, Duncan and Bo Come Correct, Exploding Heads Horror Movie Podcast, Friday the 13th, Get Slayed, The Hell Ming Power Hour, Hello, This is the Doom Show, Hero Hero Ghost Show, Kill the Cast, Underwater Kaiju from Outer Space, Jerry Hates Action, Legion After Dark, Metal Health, Obsessive Cinema, Discourse, Pick Six Movies, The Podcast by the Cemetery, The Podcast on Haunted Hill, The Psycho Semantic Podcast, Rick Radio, House of Wax, Dude Looks Like the 80s, Rabbit and Red Radio, The Shade Cast, Short Bus Cinema, Two Drink Minimum Commentaries, The VD Clinic, Who Will Survive Horror Podcast, and Which vs. the Doomsday Clock. With such a widespread of shows, there is guaranteed to be a niche for you to fall in love with. Horror, politics, movies, books, sex, music, commentaries, health, video games, kaiju, action, news, comedy, and opinions that would most likely get you killed in some parts of the world. We are proud to bring you some of the best podcasting in the world. Check us out at www.legionpodcast.com, iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, YouTube, and any other dark corner of the internet where podcasts can be found. <laughs>